All right, welcome back. I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, Katarina Axelson. She is the CEO and founder at Tastry. Please join me in welcoming Katarina to our virtual stage. Thank you, um, happy to be here. Um, today, I'm going to walk quickly walk through um, how we, as we say, taught a computer how to taste and show you five use cases across the wine industry supply chain. So Tastry is a data and insights company uh, that uses innovative AI, analytical and flavor chemistry methods to predict how consumers will perceive sensory based products. Um, the concept of Tastry uh, was born out of a custom crush winery in the central coast of California. I went to Cal Poly University and I paid my way through college by working as a chemist at various wineries. Um, that's where I noticed idiosyncrasies with how wine was made and then marketed and sold. Uh, for such a large industry in the US, uh, the wine industry is unusually far behind in using data to drive business decisions. So there was a lack of transparency. Uh, for one, we might make a 100,000 gallon batch of wine and sell half of the wine to one client, the other half to another client. And so the same wine would go under two different labels um, and go out in the market with different branding, different price points, and then it received different industry sc scores from the same uh, critics. So as an aspiring scientist at the time, I set out to test if you could objectify the subjective nature of wine by testing the chemistry. And for the next two years, I went through a journey where I read the literature and the research papers on sensory science and met with the top researchers and executives of multi-billion dollar companies. And I felt that not only was there a lack of a data-driven approach, but that the analytical chemistry methodology was attempting to solve the wrong problem. So the, the status quo was to test for the presence of a compound, for example, benzaldehyde, one of the several compounds that express the cherry flavor in a product, um, and determine if consumers would perceive the cherry flavor uh, when there's a presence of benzaldehyde. There are two problems with this approach. Uh, you know, the first is individual compounds rarely exist in nature. So you have to account for, say, in a wine, the hundreds of um, individ uh, other compounds in that bottle of wine and then the ratios of those compounds. So to determine whether or not a human would even perceive benzaldehyde amongst all the other compounds. So it's not the presence of that compound that matters, it's but the presence and absence of all the other compounds that are allowing it to either be masked or expressed. So um, I thought it was critical to look at the entire snapshot of the chemical soup uh, the same way the human palate does. And this is what we call the flavor matrix. And the second problem is even if you could determine that benzaldehyde in a given ratio produces the cherry flavor to people, it's a very poor predictor of whether or not a consumer would actually like the product because you could identify as liking cherry, but there's thousands of flavors and it's unlikely you'd like them all. But even in the unlikely event, you do like all those flavors. Um, it doesn't mean you would like it with say mushrooms. So the context of the flavor definitely matters. So over the next few years, I developed a new analytical chemistry methodology that looked at chemistry the same way that a human palate would, and as an entire snapshot. And I was gathering millions of data points per sample and realized that it would take thousands of years to process this data set. So I uh, contacted the head of the master's program in computer science and mathematics at the university. And he gave me a half hour meeting just to answer some of my questions. But after looking at the data, it evolved into a four hour meeting and he brought other PhDs into the room and they started drawing diagrams on the board. And long story short, we partnered up and over the years, uh, Professor Dektiar built an innovative AI method to process my chemistry data um, to understand the connection between what we call the flavor matrix and the human palate matrix. And we've been awarded a patent for tracking and predicting consumer preferences for sensory based products and that's why we say we taught a computer how to taste. So 
our advantage was that we had a very high quality data set that only we own and can generate. And the challenge was that we couldn't go out and buy the data um, or obtain it somewhere else. So we had to generate the data ourselves. So we generated the chemistry data in our lab, but we needed consumer palette data in the market. So we wanted people to be motivated to give us honest answers. So we launched a consumer facing product that generated personalized wine recommendations to consumers in grocery retail. And we provided an, an API and also an interface and consumers would take this short quiz where we asked questions like, how do you like black coffee or mushrooms or root beer? And you would get the top recommendations for the wines in the store that suited your personal palate. So just to clarify, this quiz is simple and sort of whimsical looking, but it's not a tasting note filter. What's happening is your responses are plotted in a, a, a or for your particular palate are plotted in a multi-dimensional space along with the chemistry of the wine. So, um, you know, the wine aisle is notorious for uh, subjecting consumers to the tyranny of choice. And we know the current systems for rating wine are outdated. So the idea with the tastery recommender is you can't buy ratings um, because for us that meant the quality of the data would suffer um, and then our insight wouldn't be valuable to the rest of the supply chain. So, so the wine recommender was a hit. Um, so retailers saw a 12% lift in sales an 18% organic lift in margins and uh, consumers scored the products on average 45% higher compared to any other method they would use to buy wine. And we continued uh, expanding um, across the US and, and as we did this, something interesting happened. We, we were generating a heat map of consumer preferences. So you could plug in a SKU in this heat map and see what percentage of the population your product would match to in the top X percentile, and you can see your competitive landscape or your target store zip code or region. And we took this data, provided it to our retail clients um, on our dashboard and they who were using our wine recommender. And they started using this to optimize their product mix on the shelf to better cater to the preferences of their consumers. Um, so we were recently featured in Gartner for this and they referred to this as a AI led demand forecasting. And um, the customers were, as a side effect, happier with the products they were buying, but we were also reducing waste on the shelves and mitigating the risk of dead inventory. So when COVID hit um, and e-com exploded, uh, we accelerated product development for an insights dashboard where the wine brands would also access this heat map. So wineries would send us their product to test at our lab and then would access this data to see where their opportunity was in the market. So you might be selling your product in Boston, but we could identify in South Beach, Florida, you have a much higher match rate to consumer palettes and your competitive landscape is better. And these are the type of consumers who would buy your product repeatedly. And, and this brings me to the final two use cases. So amidst all the excitement, um, we were approached by a very large wine conglomerate and they were curious about our technology. You know, these companies have large QC and um, uh, product development departments and we're making some pretty large claims. So, um, I said, you know, you could try to reverse engineer this for months or we could just run an efficacy test. And the test was they would send us 125 wines found in the US of their choice to our lab for testing. And this was a blind test. So we received unlabeled and numbered samples. And our objective was to test the wine and tell them the aggregate US consumer score for those wines out of five stars. So if you look at this chart, the Y axis um, is score out of five stars, the X axis is the wine samples, and the blue line is our predicted score, and the gray line is the actual score. So we predicted every wine within a tenth of a point, and they were blown away. Um, and then they said, okay, so you can predict the future. Um, if when you test the chemistry of your product, you can predict how it will perform in the market. Um, but what happens if I don't like what the future is telling me, how do I change the outcome? And that's when we reformulated one of their wines and modified 25% of the blend using Tastry AI and increased the retail value of that wine by 
And since then we've replicated the use case many times. And now we help wineries make better wine for cheaper. And we regularly outperform against blind tasting panels and we can do it in 48 hours as opposed to it taking six weeks. And we call it a tastry compi blend. So to summarize, Tastry is vertically integrated uh, as a data and insights company. And we, we have two innovative data sets, um, one on the chemistry of products, one on consumer palettes. And th th when we combine these two data sets, we can provide truly personalized recommendations, market insight, and product formulations. And every product we have um, has the advantage of generating this unique data. And as a vertically integrated business, we're starting to see the flywheel effect of this data. So the more wine brands we onboard, the more consumers are happy, the more retailers uh, want to provide recommendations and the better products we can formulate. So our vision is to provide transparency and insight throughout the entire supply chain. So consumers know what to buy and where, uh, retailers know what to sell and where, and manufacturers know what to make and who to sell it to. Tastry, we taught a computer how to taste. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing this with us. We really appreciate you sharing with us. All right, for the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. And along the way, make sure you connect with your peers with virtual networking and take some time to check out our amazing AI exhibits. Thanks so much and we'll see you around.